morning students today will be taking electrical capacitance so let us see what is electrical capacitance means it is an ability of a conductor to store a charge that is suppose if you see q i can say that q is directly proportional to v how it is as we go on increasing the charge on the conductor its potential will also increase so we can say that the charge is directly proportional to the potential so i can write q is equal to i can introduce a proportionality constant this proportionality constant is called as a capacitance so now let us define this capacitance c is equal to i can write from this q by v if v is equal to 1 unit then c is equal to q so how will you define the capacitance of a conductor is numerically equal to the charge required to raise this potential through 1 unit now what is the unit of uh, capacitance we can have the capacitance is equal to what is the unit of q it is 1 coulomb upon i can write 1 volt and this is equal to 1 farad so we we'll see that the c depends upon the medium and its dimension of a conductor in which a charge is stored so let us see an capacitance of an isolated sphere suppose i have a sphere which is being charged suppose you have a the total charge on the surface of the sphere is say q having a radius r so let us find out the value of c so since c is equal to q by v as we have done it here now v v is equal to potential is equal to already in the previous class we have done it how much it is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q by r so what the c will become c is equal to q upon q 4 pi epsilon not i have just substituted the value of v in this so what i am getting c is equal to 4 pi epsilon not r all this is a constant so i can say that c is directly proportional to the radius it means that if you increase the radius of a sphere you can its capacity increases its capacity increases so it means that if you go on increasing the size its surface increases and hence its capacitance increases but again there is a limit we cannot go on increasing the size so there should be some technique where we can have a more and more charge on the body but its size should be small so let us see the principle of a capacitor so let us see how we can increase the value of c by not increasing the surface area so for that we can have an arrangement where we can have a two plates a and b just charge the plate a by induction what will happen to the plate b this side it will have all the electrons will move towards this side so it will become negative leaving behind the positive charge so what will happen now i can go on depositing a charge on the plate a so there will be an effect of this negative charge on the plate a and of course the positive charge also will have a effect it will have a repulsive force and here this with this it will have a attractive force but since this is more nearer to this so attractive force will be more so what will happen its potential will decrease so once this potential decreases you can add more charges on it so it means that by doing by this method not we are increasing the size but we are increasing its capacitance value further we can increase it if i just do the if i connect this part to the ground let us see so what will happen if i connect this to ground the electron from the ground will neutralize this positive charge so the effect will be only the negative charge on the plate b so because of this once again there will be a more decrease in the potential so once the potential decreases we can have 
the plate A can have more and more charges. So, in this way we are increasing the ability of a plate A to store more and more charges. So, now we will see in detail about the parallel plate capacitor. Why we are saying parallel plate? By just keeping the two plates parallel in this way, we are able to increase its value, capacitance value. So, the device as a whole is called as a capacitor. So, students please remember there are two words capacitor and capacitance. Capacitance is its value and capacitor is the device which is holding a charge. So, let us see how we can have Suppose we have two parallel plates, this is say plus q and this is say minus q, they are separated by a distance d. The same formula will apply, q is equal to c v. So, c is equal to q by v. Now, we have to calculate the value of q and v. So, suppose if q is the total charge and here since we are taking a plate, the sigma represent a charge. What is the sigma? It is a charge per unit area. So, suppose if A is the area of the plate, then the total charge will be equal to sigma A. Now, let us find out how we can have. So, C will be equal to sigma A upon V. Now, let us calculate this V in terms of an electric field. So, in the previous class we have when we have defined the V value, we have arrived with one relation E is equal to minus dV by dr if you remember and this is called as a potential gradient and what is this negative sign shows has the potential there will be a fall in the potential in the direction of the electric field. So, this minus sign just shows that there will be a fall in the potential in the direction of the electric field. Otherwise, numerically if you want to find its magnitude, we can just omit this and in general I can write this is nothing in terms of this place I can write this is E is equal to V by D. So, what is the V is equal to E into D and while doing the application of the Gauss theorem we have seen that for the two parallel uh, plates the electric field within it is given by sigma upon epsilon naught. So, let us put the value of V here. So, V is equal to sigma upon epsilon naught into D. So, let us go back to the first step. We have to calculate C which was equal to sigma A upon V. Now, we will just put the value of V. So, C is equal to sigma A upon sigma D epsilon naught. So, the final result is C is equal to epsilon naught A by D. So, this is a capacitance value of a parallel plate capacitor. So, we have seen that V is equal to sigma epsilon into D and we have to calculate the C value which is equal to sigma A upon sigma d into epsilon naught. So, the final answer will get sigma is equal to epsilon naught a by d. So, now we will calculate the energy stored in a capacitor. The work done in charging a capacitor will be stored as a energy. So, how we can calculate by the same relation we will start with q is equal to C v. Now, we have seen that previously while calculating the potential V is equal to work done upon the charge. So, from this we can get the value of work done will be equal to in terms of V will be Q naught V. So, I can write for a small charge the work done is say dW. Now, since here the variable we are going to go on increasing the charge. So, we will write we will just replace this V in terms of Q. So, dW will be equal to Q by C into dQ. This is for a small charge dQ, the work done is dW. So, the total work done W is equal to Q by C dQ 0 to Q. So, this will be equal to W is equal to 1 by C. If I integrate it will be q square by 2 and after putting the limit my final result will be half q 
square by C and this work done will be stored as electrical potential energy. So, we can write this is equal to U is equal to half of Q square by C. Even we can write this in terms of V also. So, if I just replace this I can get after this substituting half C V square. So, depending upon the given quantity in the numerical you can write. So, let us now calculate the energy density in a parallel plate capacitor it is nothing but it is a total energy per unit volume. So, we can write the energy density U is equal to total energy upon per unit volume. So, what is the total energy we can write this expression half C V square. What is the volume? It is A in a parallel plate capacitor the area of the volume of the plate will be the volume within the two plates will be A into D. So, further we can substitute this C and V value. What is C? It is A epsilon naught by D into V is E into D that is E square into D square. So, this and you have in the denominator A into D. So, this A A. So, you will have the total energy that is an energy density U is equal to half epsilon naught D square. So, what is an energy density? It is an energy per unit volume. So, our next topic is non-polar and polar dielectric. Let us understand what is dielectric means. A non-conducting substance is called as a dielectric. So, again it can be classified as a non-polar and polar. So, let us see what is non-polar means. From the word itself it is clear that the positive and negative charge they coincides. Like if you consider any atom you have in the center you have a positive surrounded by the electron which are negatively charged. If the positive and negative if many of the atoms you will see that the positive and the negative charge the center of the positive and the negative charge coincides. So, they do not have the positive and negative charge are not separated the distance between them is 0. So, they are called as a non-polar a very fine example is oxygen and hydrogen. Like what I want to say suppose you have a nucleus in which you have a positive charge surrounded by the electrons they are negative. If the center of the positive and center of the negative coincides we call it as a non-polar. So, the separation between the positive and the negative is 0. So, they will have the net dipole moment moment will be 0, but such. So, how will you draw it suppose this is my non-conducting slab or a material we have positive and negative and so on. So, in the absence of an electric field this positive and negative coincide. So, net dipole of each atom is 0, but if they are placed in an electric field what happens all the positive charge they move towards the electric field and negative in the direction opposite to the negative. How we can show it? Suppose this is a direction of the electric field. So, they will get separated. So, there is a distance between now the positive and the negative charge. So, in this case now they will have a dipole moment. Here the dipole moment is 0. They do not have a permanent dipole moment. Whereas, in the case in the presence of an electric field the dipole is being induced. So, we can say they will have an induced dipole moment. So, now what happens to the polar dielectric let us see. Now, in the polar dielectric from the word itself again it is clear that the positive and negative charges are separated. It means the center of the positive and the center of the negative they do not coincide and they separated by some distance. So, they have individually each atom will have a dipole. So, what is polar in this case we can just draw it.
So the each atom in a polar dielectric, the positive and negative charges are separated by some distance. So each atom will have a dipole moment, but as a whole, the net the effect will be zero. So in this case also, because they are oriented in the different direction, so net dipole moment in the absence of the electric field here it will be zero, even though individually each atom will have a dipole moment. So in this case also the dipole moment will be zero, but when they are placed in an electric field what happens, this all the atoms they just orient in the direction of the electric field and then in the presence of an electric field all these atoms will align in one particular direction. So here also there will be an as a whole there will be an induced dipole moment. So you are seeing that in the case of a non-polar the, there is no permanent dipole moment but in the presence of an electric field you have an induced dipole moment whereas in the case of a polar individually each atom will have a dipole moment but as a whole the dipole moment here also will be zero but in the presence of an electric field they align in a direction of the electric field such that the positive move towards the electric field and negative moves towards the direction in the opposite to the electric applied electric field. So in both the cases we will have induced dipole moment. Now let us see how to find the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor with dielectric slab between the two plates. So before do, uh, doing that let us see what is the expression which we have already done it what is the expression without any medium in between it. So how will you start again same thing Q is equal to CV same formula we are going we are using everywhere. So we want to find C so this is Q into V. So what is Q this is the total charge if the sigma is the charge per unit area I can write instead of Q I can write sigma into A and then what is V? we have seen E, e is equal to V by D from that potential gradient expression. So I can write V is equal to E into D. Now what is E? What is E? E is equal to sigma upon epsilon naught. So I can write sigma epsilon naught D. So I can write this has uh, say C naught I can write that is without any medium. So 